So I think kind of first question, I really want to know is the kind of differences between playing hockey in the States and over here in the UK, like what's the big differences that you notice kind of straight away? I think initially the biggest thing that stands out for me, just growing up on that single size, NHL size rink, uh, is, is the size difference. Yeah. The Olympic size over here. Um, and it makes a big difference in the game. You know, there's a lot more space for a skilled player to move around and move his feet and make a pass. And um, for a player like myself, I consider myself kind of like a physical uh, defenseman. You know, I'm trying to play the body as much as I possibly can. That's yeah. just how I play hockey. And um, so I think that's the biggest difference because, you know, like kind of what I was getting at is if you if I was to run at you and try to hit you and you make a quick move, you know, I could potentially get beat into the net or take a penalty or, you know, there's a lot of, lot of things that can happen. So I think yeah. initially that's the biggest thing. You kind of got to get used to that uh, rink size and, um, and, you know, get comfortable, like I said. And, and then I guess for the most part, I would say North American hockey and the English hockey over here, the Elite League, it's pretty similar. It's it's a very North American style. It's physical, it's fast, skilled. A lot of good players. You know, you got your three strong lines, and um, it was an easy transition for me, really. Yes. Yeah. It yeah, it's been good. Um, so you were mentioning the the elite leagues quite similar to like North American style hockey, quite physical. Um, obviously, fans of the team already know that you're quite a physical, quite a solid guy. Um, Getting the occasional fight, and um, what would you say is the kind of like the catalyst for a fight? Like, is there obviously there'll be rivalries, there'll be maybe personal reasons, there'll be guarding your team. Like, what's the kind of like more technical? Yeah, I, yeah. I think uh, main reason is kind of what you said there is protecting uh, your teammates is the biggest thing for me personally is. I like to show my team that I'm willing to back them up, willing to put myself out there for them and, and kind of show the other team that, you know, maybe they hit our captain or they hit any of our players. Maybe it's a big check or a dirty check or something that just doesn't look right to me or, you know, the team seems to take it in a bad way. I, you know, there's a, there's a reason for me to go up and kind of challenge the guy and, and it's almost a way to police the game yeah. like almost to show hey you can't be doing that kind of deal and to also show your teammates that you got their back so I think that's kind of one of the, the biggest reasons to you know control the game in a sense yeah. um, there's, there's other things like we're getting beaten badly and the team's flat and there's just no energy and they just the guys just don't seem to have it that night and you know like you're saying a rival on the other team that might be a known fighter or a guy that's willing to drop the gloves you know I or another one of my teammates goes and challenge him and you know he's willing and he accepts the fight and uh, immediately when that happens everybody gets excited you know the supporters are up yelling and <laughs> screaming and the music gets cranked and the team on both benches are up and cheering for that guy and you know you're putting yourself out there and uh, potentially injured and um, you know you're, you're going out there to create excitement you know maybe get our team going maybe they see that and there's hope oh, he's out there battling and you know we need to do the same kind of thing yeah. and they get going they get fired up and uh, I think that's another really big reason um, there's also the personal uh, I wouldn't say retaliation, but if I got hit dirty and I didn't like it, and you know I wanted to, you know, kind of show you can't be doing that to me as also, or you know I didn't like what happened from a previous game or something like that, and I just challenged the guy and and we go at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fans love it, man. Fans love it. <clears throat> and obviously, like you said, if you if you need a bit of enthusiasm, get a fight going, the fans will get louder. The fans will get behind the team. The players will obviously buzz off that, so it kind of regenerates the whole, the whole buzz for the game. If you're looking for like a couple of goals, you're looking for a winner. It's obviously really good for that and gets everyone going. Like, oh yeah, no, it, you said it perfectly there. It gets everybody fired up. Yeah, you know, and it's fun. Yeah, from the <laughs> rafters down on the ice, everybody's fired yeah, up. Definitely.
obviously disgusting fights like um is there it's quite a weird question I guess but again relevant as far as fighting goes in the elite league back home like is there any fights that have been really like meaningful to you like not in a kind of aggressive way but has there ever been fights you've had with like players that you've looked up to people you've respected people that you've maybe seen in bigger teams when you were younger that you've wanted to get the opportunity to kind of go to battle with yeah that's actually a really good question there's the one that really pops out of my mind I'll save for last uh, but there's been a I've been in a lot of fights and there's been a lot of them and uh, the ones that kind of stand out to me are Guys like uh, Colton Orr, who played in the NHL for many years, uh, was with with a couple different teams. Was with Toronto at the time. He got sent down to the, to the American Hockey League where I was playing, and um, we ended up fighting a couple times. And you know that, those are pretty memorable. I mean, he was everybody knows him over yeah. in North America. And um, Cam Jansen, another really tough man, fought him a couple of years back. Uh, he was notorious for a long time. You know, he was he was one of the smaller guys who would go toe to toe with these big guys, and he would you know do damage. Yeah. And uh, he was kind of like a I wouldn't say a Ty Domi, but you know a Ty Domi was smaller, and he still would give it to the big yeah. guys. So that was a big one. Um, Steve McIntyre, who was the complete opposite of the spectrum, about <laughs> six six, almost three hundred pounds. That guy was uh, that was a tough one. I I think. Um, you know, that that was one of those fights where I was standing up for my teammate and um, it just had to be done. You yeah. know, it wasn't, I didn't go into the fight thinking I'm going to beat this guy up, but it was one of those where I just kind of sent a message like, you know, I got your back. You know, back of the team, yeah. get him a penalty. Yeah. I guess the team above. Get him off the ice. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess the biggest one, uh, which I kind of brought up there, was a guy who played for the D Detroit Red Wings for many, many years. I watched him growing up, played with... Bob Probert and uh, a lot of the greats, Eisermans and all that, uh, was Darren McCarty, um, guy's an absolute legend and he had retired from hockey, um, was coming, wanted to make a comeback and Detroit was loyal enough to him where they basically offered him a contract in the American League again to kind of make his way back up. Mm -hmm. uh, he played for Grand Rapids and um, I was playing for the Manitoba Moose at the time and I was a young man, and I was. We were everybody kind of. We did not. We didn't laugh, but we all were like, "Wow, we're playing against Darren McCarty tonight," kind of <laughs> deal. And and I and I honestly just went up to him. I was like, "Hey, man, I re I respect you fully," and was kind of hoping to to get the you know get a chance to go toe to toe with you, kind of deal. And, you know, maybe not in the nicest way, but you yeah. know, because you can't can't give it all away, right? But. He, uh, he obliged and we had a good fight. He tied me up really well, gave me a couple throat punches and <laughs> he was, it was, it was cool though. I mean, the best part about that was he was in a band too. He ended up giving our, uh, our announcer the CD. He said, here, give us a pity after the game. And <laughs> so we kind of had like a little personal connection yeah. there. So it was really cool. And like I said, the guy's a legend. I watched him growing up many years. Um, and that, that was probably the most standout one. And. You know, those kind of fights uh, potentially further my career, you know, yeah. like any of, those, any of those guys I named off, you know, I, I was trying to make it to the NHL and those are the guys that were heavyweights in the NHL and they fought regularly and earned jobs yeah. in the NHL and, you know, for like a guy like myself, those are the guys that could help me out yeah. in the end. You obviously see me standing up to guys that... Everybody's level. seen YouTube and, you, you know, scouts watch that stuff and... There could have been that one guy in the crowd that could have, you know, seen it and, you know, taken me to the next level. But, um, yeah, those are those are probably the most memorable ones. Yeah, that's that interesting. Out. I mean, a lot of fans will just find it entertaining, like, a fight is a fight. And it's not an aggressive fight as such, like, in the street where it's not really allowed. And in right. a game, it's like, it's allowed and it's a bit more... It's not as brutal as just people fighting in the street, but it's cool to understand that kind of there's more to it than just yeah the sort of physical battle. There's obviously fighting people you respect, maybe yeah. getting your career further. And, yeah, that's cool. 
Yeah, no, it's, it was good. Um, so since you got here last September, uh, for starting the season, have you had much sort of time away from practice and away games and home games to get out and explore any parts of Scotland? Or? Yeah, I think we've done a decent job of exploring. Um, ever since I found out I was coming here, uh, myself and my lady and my family included have been pretty pumped about it. We Grandma started talking about how we had connections over here, you know, and um, brought out a couple of pictures and and uh, we have, I'm part of the Scott clan, so she has a little plaque with the tartan colors and kind of the explanation of the family and, you know, where the, you know, ancestors kind of came from. And, yeah. um, so that was really cool to kind of know, well, you know, I've got a lot of Scottish blood and, um, and then on top of it, my... Uh, basically, where it comes from is my great grandfather was a pilot for the Royal Air Force during the First World War, and um, he was stationed in Scotland. And towards the end of the war, there um, he ended up meeting a, a lady from Air down south there, and uh, proposed to her on the bridge down there. And so that's how she has a painting of yeah. um, you know the big steeple there and everything. And um, so that was really cool to hear before we even got before here. You can go here yeah. yeah, so that was so we went and explored air, uh, saw the Cullian Castle down there, um, explored a ton of castles, Stirling, Edinburgh, uh, Loch Lomond, Bellet Castle up there. Um, we even took a ferry over to the Isle of Butte and um, checked out Mount Stewart, which was really cool. Uh, a lot of detail, like so much, so much detail. It was just amazing to look at. And unfortunately, the guy that was working there uh, was kind of our guide, so he was able to tell us what a lot of it meant and um, and kind of the meaning behind why the owner of the place did that. And, mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool. It was really cool to experience that. And you know, we've just been trying to take it in. We got a lot of things yet on the list to see, like Isle of Skye and. The Highlands, most of the Highlands. Yeah, I mean, the Highlands goes for so long. Like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I still haven't seen. I've been here for 29 years, so it's <laughs> a lot of stuff on the list. But it's definitely a, a really cool place to check out. Like, it is. You guys are lucky. I mean, there's this is a destination for a lot of North Americans to come just to vacation. Yeah. And and see, and we're fortunate enough to be living here, you know. So yeah. very lucky, very lucky, and gonna try to take it as much in as we can yeah so. well obviously once the season finishes if you've got any time before you go home for summer like definitely check out like as much as you can like get that list sure. ticked man get the list ticked yeah 100 percent. yeah see some live music too yeah definitely, definitely. maybe your band maybe maybe we're gonna have to get a gig set up eh just for you, <laughs> just for you, you can come to the studio. There we go. We'll do a wee private, wee private set for you, some unreleased stuff, man. It'd be amazing. That'd be cool. But yeah, well, thanks for, thanks for chatting, man. Um, if you want to, we're doing a, a written interview as well, so if you want to check that out, click the link below, and there'll be a ton of answers on there to different questions as well. Cheers. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you... Fuck. What was the second question? The good thing is, is we're fading out. Exactly, man. We can talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> <sighs> Musa. <laughs> I make bloopers. Yeah. Bloopers. bloopers.